So Max, as a uh, whiskey maker for Highland Park, it's your job to put all of the cast together to make sure everything tastes the same, is that is that fair? Yep, that's a fair comment. Um, the consistency every month, uh, we generally do two, maybe three blends, depending on the sales, yep. every month of the year. So what we're looking for is uh, consistency right throughout the year. Uh, the casts are not, not the same, and it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, it becomes easier as, with experience, but, uh, for example, this may give you some idea of the differences. Yep. If I give you an example here, a nice dark, yep. dark sherry. Yep. The, that colour itself is probably too dark for the actual bottling. It has its own parameters of colour. Some Again, consistency. We want consistency of product and consistency of colour as well. Yep. So what we do with that, we'd put that in. But we'd bring the colour of that nice dark sherry cast down with a nice lighter, slightly lighter yep. refill hogshead. Right. That brings the colour down. And then we work between the, the butts and the refill hog says to get the correct colour. Yep. But not, not every cask works out the same, and not every cask we can use. As you can see from this cask here, <laughs> it's 12 years old and has no, virtually no maturation whatsoever. Water, virtually it? almost new spirit. And this cask it's, would probably not, would never ever be used in a Highland Park vatting. What would happen to that cask, and I know you're going to ask me, would be we'd probably use that in a grouse malt. Yeah. Where the that, uh, where the caramel is added. So for the sort of beginner, I suppose a lot of people I speak to believe that every single cask produces the same colour of whiskey and the same flavours in the whiskey. It's not no. like that, is it? No, not at all. I mean, uh, I could pick up cask number one and cask number two there of a sherry cask uh, of the sherries, number one, number two, same uh, sherry Spanish oak, uh, Spanish sherry's been used in it. But in actual fact, the wood might be slightly different or it's matured slightly slower or quicker. The shape of the cast may play a part as well. So they do know slightly different and that's probably where the consistency of product comes in. That's why we do two or three every month so that we can balance out the consistency. It must make your life really, really hard. So if you've made the 12 year old uh, today and then the next month you're going to have to use, you can't use the same casks because they've, they've all gone. Mm -hmm. All the casks will be different sizes, shapes, colours and strengths mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. But still you, your job is to make the same flavour as you did to yep. keep, the, to keep yep. that consistency. Well, it, you will never ever get it the same. No, no, no whiskey, whether it be a blend or a malt, will ever ever be the same. What you're trying to get is as close as you possibly can to last month's ones. So I, I, I probably have the nose of Highland Park 12 year old stuck in my head somewhere. Yep. And when the next one comes round, I'm thinking, well, how was the last one? And I'm going to try and aim to get it as close as I possibly can to that last one. But when it comes round to putting the, the uh, bottling together, yep. we, we never ever use just the one blend. We would we'd use four or five different blends. Again, that makes the, the, the product much more consistent. There are differences. Differences that we can't do anything about, yep. but what we're looking for, consistency of quality of the product. I mean, I suppose it would be make your life easier, wouldn't it, if we just added caramel to everything? Because then oh, you wouldn't. Sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I spend, I could spend probably the whole day doing a Highland Park uh, vatting. Um, the idea would be, I would say to the, the blends department, could you put all these casts in? But I have already calculated the colour, what it will come out at. We usually do use 10 mLs for a butt and 5 mLs for a hogshead. It's, quite, it's as simple as that. If I have 20, 20 casks going in, 10 of them are butts, 10 of them are hoggies, I do 10 times 10 mL and 10 times 5 mL. That gives me an idea of what it should be once the guys have decanted it. Yeah. And from there, they do not reduce it. They give me a sample and I check to make sure that the colour is as, as near as I've got it. And from there, I check the colour the strength, work out what it will be when it's reduced down to 45, and also check the consistency of product and quality as well. So it does, it does take quite a lot of time, and it takes a lot of the blends, um, it up, takes up a lot of time of the guys in the blends as well. You know, um, the, but they, they have fallen into the routine comfortably yeah. that they use. They don't all, we don't always get it right first time. So you, you created it full strength, uh, and then you have to water it down down to forty percent. So how yeah. how do you how do you know how the colour changes from that? Well, we have a, we just have a calculation a macro that is, if the colour is such and such at fifty five percent, it will be such and such at forty three. It's just pure and simply a colour. The a macro on the computer does it. You're making this sound so simple, Mark. So I can't, well, I can't yeah. possibly be. Once, once it becomes <laughs> habitual. It becomes habitual. Um, and the more often, the more you do of them, the more you can almost get it down to doing it right the first time because the, we try not to engage the, the guys in the blends having to do the blend too many times, add too many casts and then add another three yeah. and then add another three. 
So after a Bith experience, you can tell by looking at the, the sherries how many of the, the refill hogsheads can bring, bring it down. And usually you, you, you've got a balance. Uh, for example, the first time I did it, it took four attempts to get it done. Now I can usually get it first time, usually get it first time. So of all the whiskies that we make at Highland Park, what's, what's the one that's your, your personal favourite? Oh, my personal favourite would probably be the 30-year-old. Oh, yeah, yeah fair, 30-year-old. I, when I'm talking to people about Highland Park, 30-year-old, I tell them, is the feminine version of Highland Park because it's very fruity and floral. Right. And uh, I think that would probably be my, my favourite. That's the one I like the best. I like them all. 40-year-old would be second. Yeah. Uh, but 30-year-old, I think uh, I, I think almost people, probably people who have never, ever drunk whiskey before in their life, I think I could safely say that I could get them drinking 30-year-old Highland Park comfortably. 